Hi, I'm Lizzie, and today I'm going to show you the new fabric kit, um, Quilt As You Go Mug Rug. And this is what it's going to look like when you've finished it. It's beautiful, isn't it? So what's inside the box? Well, as usual, we're going to give you everything that you could possibly need, except the thread, to complete this project. So let me get everything out for you. And it's lovely because on the back it shows you what's in the box as well, if you're in any doubt. So the first thing we're going to see is the wadding. Now this is the wadding that you're going to be using and you can see that it's all numbered. Well, hopefully you can see that. And it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You start with number one and you work all the way through till you've, you've completed it, which is number nine. And that's going to be really easy for you to do. Such a great technique. So that is the wadding. Then of course you've got the fabric and the fabric is all pre-printed with all the shapes on that you need and every single one is numbered as well so the number of the fabric piece corresponds with the number on the wadding so it makes it super easy so if you need a quick project to do this could well be it so you need to cut all of these out you need to cut them right up to the edge so right up to where they've ended printing and if you think you're going to forget what each piece is then they're all got the instructions on there as well so the um, description so that's like the corner triangles so you could pin one of those to the triangles if you think you're going to forget but take a photograph of that as well that's quite useful to refer to so that's your fabric all pre-printed and pre-numbered as well and the wadding and most important of all we have full step-by-step -step instructions with the pictures and the words for you to follow and of course this video tutorial so that's the first thing you need to do is get everything out of the box get it all cut and you're ready to stitch so I've cut all my pieces out and I've got them ready for me to start stitching. Before you do that, it's a good idea to actually lay the pieces out so you can see exactly where they're going to go. Um, so the first one is number one and the not only is the wadding marked, but the fabric is marked too, number one. So we can pop that on there. We can see straight away that's where that goes. And then you've got the corner pieces as well, the triangles. So two goes with two. Let's have a look. Three goes with three, four and five. So actually you're going to make this part up first and then you're going to start doing the strips going down. Now just a word of warning, six and nine look almost identical depending on which way you've got them round. So just be aware with the pattern, let me show you that, you're going to have it with the flowers and the little dots alternately um, because on the actual fabric we've got the number nine here but actually if you turn it that way it looks like number six so just so you know so if we lay these out as well so we've got six we've got seven we've got eight and we've got nine so you can see that's exactly how it should look once you've stitched it so you could put those pieces in order on your desk if you want to but like I say they are all numbered so it should make it really easy for you to do so the first thing we're going to do, like I said, is to make this centre piece up first. So if we take all the pieces off again, so we know that number one goes there. We'll make sure we've got it really central over our square. And you, again, you can pin that if you want to, just to hold everything in place. Or you could use stick and spray. So now we need number two. And number two goes here. So you can see, let me hold this up so you can see, so it's right for you. So number two actually sits in that corner there, but we obviously want to do right sides together to actually stitch. So that's what it will look like. So if you just flip that over, just like that, pin it in place, obviously straighter than that, and then you're good to start stitching. Um, three goes here, four and five. Okay, so I'm going to stitch those together now. So there's all our pieces in place. You could give that a quick press if you want to so they all sit nice and flat. But I'm just going to pin my pieces down just for the time being. Now 
So now we're ready to put the strips into place. So we need to put number six down first. So this goes across here. And again, I'll just pin that in place. And follow the lines on the mat and then everything will be straight. Because you might find like this, that your, one of your triangles might go slightly over and it, that doesn't matter. As long as you've caught it in the seam, it's perfectly fine. So to make sure that what you've stitched is the correct size, place the backing, uh, wrong side facing up, over the top of your um, piece of stitching that you've just done, so you'll be able to see the excess that needs to be cut away. So now I've trimmed it to size, so both um, the mat that we've actually created and the backing are now a perfect fit. So now that we've got everything all the right size, we need to pin these pieces together and then stitch all the way around, leaving a little gap for turning. You could leave it at one of the ends, I think I would, maybe with the end strip, um, I'll show you how. So while we've got those little pins there, just holding that last piece down, I'm just going to use those to bring these pieces together. So pin all the way around, or you can tack or baste to hold it all in place. And also, if you have a walking foot for your machine, this is such a good time to get the walking foot out. And it'll keep all those layers together nicely. So there we are. Extreme inning. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start from just inside, about a half an inch or a centimetre, just inside that corner there, in fact it would be this one down here, go down to the corner, all the way around, leave that open for turning and then we're good to go for making our mat. After that I would give it a really good press with a nice steamy iron um, and then I would uh, top stitch. So we'll just stitch that round and then we're done. So I'll take that first pin out. And take the pins out as you go, never stitch over your pins, they could easily break. A little back stitch to hold because that's going to be um, a pressure point where you actually turn through. And this is where a walking foot is really good. So there we are, I've stitched all the way around, I've left my opening at the end there. So the first thing you need to do is to trim those corners right down, not too near the stitching, because you still need to maintain a little bit of strength there. And I would also cut all the wadding and the fabric away and take it down to about, a, um, about an eighth of an inch. If you didn't um, take that uh, wadding and seam allowances away, um, you might find it difficult for your machine to go through all of those layers when you're top stitching. Now I know I haven't trimmed here, but I would trim this wadding right back as well. So all you're going to do now is turn through. So you could go right up to the end here and just grab that and push that through. That might be easier. And it's always a bit fiddly when you turn these things through. And it always looks a little daunting, doesn't it? Nice blunt end of your scissors to get into the corners or a knitting needle, um, not too small. I think, a, I, think a size, um, I think it's a size 10 that I use. Oh, I forget. But a nice big knitting needle is good for turning through. You don't want to push this through your fabric. Oh, it'd be so disappointing. 
there we go so get those corners out as best you can and you could get um if you could get a little needle in there and pull that out even more but just be careful because you don't want to ruin your fabric so again just poke those corners out push them through here we go and it always looks better for a top stitch so um you could even do that by hand so just get those corners through and this is the end give that a good press now Let's put it that way and there we are we're all completed a little bit of top stitching around the edge or you could do some embroidery that would look nice so there we are so that's our mug rug so if we bring in the one that we saw earlier pop that there ready to put our mug on thank you